Today I'm going to be reading The Cat Who Came In From The Cold by Derek Longdon. Chapter 1. If the kitten hadn't smiled up at me, well, maybe I could have resisted him. Just the palest flicker moved across his serious little chess player's face, and then it quickly dived for cover, back under the worried frown. But it was enough. But it was enough, and in that moment he had me where he wanted me. Patrick had introduced us over the hedge. What about that then? What about what? That over there. He pointed to an upturned bucket on the top of which a small white kitten was performing a semi-professional jug juggling act with a wine-stained cork and a clothes peg. Is it yours? Yes. Let's have a look at it. I had never thought of Patrick as an animal lover. He was a big man and as hard as nails. And I didn't know then about his soft centre. The kitten disappeared from sight as a huge fist closed over him and then he blinked at the sunlight as he emerged from the on my side of the hedge. He was about the size of a jam pot and he had a leg stuck out on each corner. What's his name? Tigger. That's original. It's the name he, he came up with. The kitten looked up at me and shook his head as though it, as though to say it wasn't. There's nothing to him. What are you feeding him on? You can catch mice. I don't believe in, I don't believe in spoiling them. As dusk fell, I watched him from the kitchen window, down in the courtyard next door, as he sat on his bucket, a bewildered expression on his sad little face, as he wondered why his mother hadn't come for him yet. Aileen crept, Aileen crept up slightly behind me. You're not still worried about the kitten? It's tiny. It could get mugged by a mouse. We haven't got any mice. Then the poor little devil's going to starve to death. It was out there again early next morning. Patrick and Sarah had gone to work and the kitten mooched around the courtyard sniffing at the pansies the only flowers he could reach with such a low slung nose he worked out for a few minutes on the rim of a plant pot and then went and sat on his bucket for and then went and sat on his bucket once more god i can't read <laughs> somebody had pinched his cork and his clothes peg was clamped tight to a tea towel as it swung on the line. It was Monday morning and the peg had a living to earn. So had I. I took a slice of toast and a coffee into my office and switched on the computer. This was the best part of the day. Sitting in my sitting at my desk in my dressing gown, reading over the pages I had written the day before. Out of the corner of my eye, the two stories down. No, out of the corner of my eye and two stories down. Ugh. I could see the lowry like figures bent against the drizzle, battling their way to work. I'd had 30 years of that, but not anymore. I switched on the fan heater with my naked toe and took a bite of toast. Drizzle. The kitten would be getting soaked. I pushed my chair back and then paused as common sense tapped me on the shoulder. Where are you going? I'm just going to have a look at the kitten. See if that's alright. I'm just going to have a look at the kitten, see if it's alright. <sighs> How do you mean, see if it's alright? It'll be getting wet. It's a cat. They're waterproof, for God's sake. I suppose you're right. Of course I'm right, so where are you going? Get some more toast. No, you're not. You haven't finished that slice yet. You're going to... Oh, piss off. He was still sitting on his upturned bucket, but he seemed to have shrunk. With his white fur plastered against his head, he was only half the size he had been, and that meant there was hardly any kitten there at all. He looked up and caught sight of me. 
I quickly pulled my head away from the kitchen window. Aileen appeared at my elbow. What's wrong? Common sense could take the rest of the day off. Here was the original article in the flesh. It's the kitten. He's sat down there. What's he doing? Throwing things at you? No, he's, he's just looking at me. It shouldn't be allowed, she said and switched on the kettle. I switched it off and filled it with water. I feel sorry for it. I know you do. But I don't want to get involved. I know you don't. You're a big help. I know I am. I took another peep through the window and he was waiting for me for a moment. I thought he was going to wave, but no, he just smiled. He smiled at me. He what? He smiled at me. Oh, God. But he had. It was the sort of smile that suggests I'm in a hell of a mess, God knows. But I could still laugh at life. Well, you know, don't you? And then he looked away, overcome by the hopelessness of it all. Was that a tear glinting in the corner of his eye? I pulled open the fridge door. What are you doing? Breakfast. I'll just have toast. The kitten. I don't believe this. I took out half I took out half and I took out half a roast chicken and carved a slice from the breast, then another. One will do. Yes I know, but the outside gets hard. It's softer It's softer if you take it from the inside. I trailed off, realising how ridiculous I sounded. It'll only have its milk teeth, I added, trying to justify myself. Then take it some milk. That's a good idea. I took the chicken. I cut the chicken into bite-sized chunks with the scissors and covered the pattern on and covered the pattern on the saucer with milk. Here. What? Alien held out a piece of kitchen roll. Take him a napkin. We don't want him spilling it all over his fur. I was halfway down the fifteen stone steps to the courtyard before I realised that I was still in my bare feet and dressing gown. The drizzle was getting the drizzle was getting the hang of it now and turning into the grown up stuff. What the hell? What the hell, I was going to have a shower today. Where are you, puss? The courtyard was surrounded by a, twen by a 12 foot high stone wall and the hedge that separated Patrick's half from my half was matching it inch for inch. Come on, breakfast. The hedge was thicker than the wall and I had to fall on my hands and knees to peer, to peer through the sparser growth down by the roots. The kitten was peering through at me from the other side. He didn't have to go down on his hands and knees. Good morning. He nodded politely. There you are. It's chicken. I tried to push the saucer through the through between the roots, but the space wasn't wide enough. So I tilted the saucer slightly and the chicken fell off. Damn. He frowned. He wasn't used to swearing. Can you reach it from there? He was puzzled. He wasn't sure what I was up to. It's nearer your side than mine. He wasn't there. He was gone. Where was he? I heard a lapping noise from down by my left foot. And there he was, sitting on a corner of, sitting on a corner of my dressing gown.